Hi, Jackie Van Ruler here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing some reflexology for frozen shoulder. If you're not already subscribed to my Instagram channel, I do post these face maps on Instagram, and I do that so you don't have to follow along with the video every time you do it. You can just refer to that face map to know the points on your face to work. Frozen shoulder, also called adhesive capsulitis, is a condition um, that generally um, occurs more often in women. Women between the ages of 40 and 60 are particularly common for having it, and what happens is they get a lot of pain and inflammation in the shoulder joint, and then that turns into scar tissue. It prevents movement, so they have range of motion issues, and then a lot of pain with that as well. Um, some of the ways that it can be treated is cortisone shots, which will really only work for a week or two. But additionally, when you have cortisol injected into your joints, it can actually break down the bones and the ligaments and the tendons because it is a stress hormone. So what it does is it reduces the inflammation for a short period of time, but for a longer period of time, it will actually cause more inflammation and breakdown in your body. So it's not what you wanna do. You also wanna avoid surgery if you can. Um, a lot of people will do physical therapy or different things like that, but I found that facial reflexology works very, very well, particularly when you do it consistently. So if you're just starting to have symptoms with frozen shoulder, this is something you're going to want to do very frequently, I would say up to three, four times a day. And then we're also gonna give you some other advice as well that can help it to um, get better a lot faster. So we're gonna start with working the, the primary shoulder points on your face, which is going to be this area right here in the corners of the forehead. So I'm starting with my left side here and I'm working it nice and slowly and gently, taking some deep breaths as I'm working. And see if it areas that feel lumpy or bumpy or tender. You always do want to make sure you're using a metal tool because this is actually um, grounding and calming the energy. We use metal because it conducts electricity and your nervous system is an electrical system. Okay. Primarily the side that you're going, you have the shoulder pulled yeah, the frozen shoulder is also the side where you're going to notice the most lumpiness or bumpiness. Also, you might notice that there are some breakouts, scar tissue, um, discolorations, or things like that in this area can be very common if you have something like frozen shoulder. Okay. So notice which side is more lumpy or bumpy, and then also which side you have the frozen shoulder on. Now, one thing I want to mention is that if you have frozen shoulder, you probably have limited range of motion, and you might have to only use one side, the side that's not affected, in order to do this. So I switch from hand to hand because I'm used to it, but you may have to be um, using only the hand that's, or the arm that's okay. Okay, next area we're gonna do is the kidneys. So fingers on the corners of the mouth, all the way up to the hairline, come down just a little bit. As you're feeling in this area, you'll feel an area like a, it's a little divot that your fingers fit into. These are your kidney spots. Your kidneys have to do with hydration and water movement within your body. And so the kidneys are going to be about hydrating your connective tissue. Your connective tissue is what keeps your body um, structurally sound. Um, and if your connective tissue isn't hydrated, then it can become brittle um, it can be, it's more likely to have scar tissue, and so as we're working this, this can actually help to decrease some of the scar tissue that occurs with frozen shoulder. Okay, next we're gonna work the points 124 and 34. So this is gonna be halfway between the brow and the forehead, about two thirds of the way back on the brow. And for this one, this is great for pain management. This relaxes an irritated nervous system by producing the neurotransmitter GABA. GABA is a nervous system relaxant. And then also what we're doing here is we're working the gallbladder point on the right. Um, gallbladder has a lot to do with right shoulder pain. And then on the left hand side, we're working the spleen, which has a lot to do with left shoulder pain. So depending on what side you have the frozen shoulder, you might have some spleen issues or some gallbladder issues. The spleen is related to support within your body. It's about supporting yourself, supporting others in your life, and self-esteem. And the gallbladder can have to do with feelings of resentment or not having the courage to do the things that you want to do. 
Then I'm going to work this whole area in here. So point 34 is going to be right on this inner brow. That's a paired point with 124. Great for reducing pain. Um, great for an overall calming and relaxing effect. And this whole area in here also has a lot to do with the shoulders. So working this whole area and getting point 34 while you're doing that. Notice if there's tension. Notice if you have these lines like I do. Those are signs that you tend to carry stress in your shoulders. Before I started doing facial reflexology, I literally, if I went for a massage, they were always like, Is your sh are your shoulders always this tight? I think my shoulders were like up to here and just tense, tense, tense. I've noticed a huge improvements in the relaxation of my shoulders, but also these lines were like etched in and deep before I started it. And as I've been working on them regularly, they've become much more relaxed. So you might notice some things on your face that change as you're doing more and more facial reflexology. Okay, then we're gonna come onto the nose to the area where your sunglasses would sit. And you're gonna work this area. Notice that when you work this area nice and slowly, you have this urge, strong urge to take a deep breath. This relaxes the nervous system um, and particularly the diaphragm. And so this point is very, very relaxing. It helps you to breathe better. And what happens is when you're breathing well and your lungs are inflating and deflating, this is also giving all of those muscles along your spine a nice massage and it's relaxing your shoulders. So a great area to work just for overall relaxation. Now we're gonna come to the left side of the face in line with the flare of the nose directly underneath the iris of the eye. This is the point for the spleen. The spleen is the largest lymph node of the body. And in here, what we're using it for is that shoulder area tension. So if you have left shoulder pain, the spleen is gonna be a great point to work because the spleen meridian runs right through um, that shoulder area. And so this will relax shoulder pain on the left-hand side. And we go to the right side in line with the bottom of the nose, directly under the iris of the eye is the liver. And if you go a little bit to the right of that, you get the gallbladder. So you get the liver and gallbladder here on this lower cheek area. And I wanna talk a little bit about the liver and the gallbladder in their relation to the shoulder and to ligaments and tendons. So one of the things that is very common is that women between the ages of 40 and 60 are more likely to have frozen shoulder. And I think that has a lot to do with them starting menopause, going through perimenopause and that sort of a thing. The liver and the gallbladder are very much related to your hormonal balance because what they do is they take fats, particularly saturated fat and cholesterol, and they turn those fats into your hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, vitamin D, all of those things. And so if you are a woman, and women tend to want this more, to be on low-fat diets because you think that eating a high-fat diet will make you fat, um, this has been pretty much debunked by now, but if you're not eating enough saturated fat and cholesterol, your body cannot turn those into hormones. And additionally, cholesterol is required to keep your ligaments and tendons lubricated and strong. And so if you don't have that nice lubrication within your ligaments and tendons, that can cause issues in your shoulders and also other joints as well. So I highly recommend that you add more saturated fat and cholesterol to your diet and take out all seed oils. Seed oils are terrible for your body. They um, produce this fake-like fat that surrounds your cell membranes and doesn't allow your body to metabolize. So additionally, frozen shoulder is also very much correlated with higher blood sugar levels in people who are um, diabetic or pre-diabetic. And that is also in part because high blood sugar levels, um, the sugar, the glucose in your blood will actually bind with collagen and form this like glue-like substance that doesn't allow for easy movement. It's called glycation. And so when you have glycation, it's like it stores this glue-like stuff that can cause that scar tissue or, or a, um, at least contribute to it and cause that lack of movement or range of motion in your joints. So please, please, please cut out seed oils. They're in everything, all processed foods, salad dressings, fries. Every food that you eat from a restaurant has some sort of seed oil in it, most likely. So you really have to look for it in your foods and really cut that out. Seed oils are canola, vegetable oil, soybean, sunflower, safflower, peanut, 
any of these foods that are not occurring naturally in nature, things that have to be highly processed and highly heated. Okay, so that's my little rant on a diet. And then our last point is going to be point 16, which is where the top of the ear meets the face. This is another shoulder area. So working in here very, very nicely. You can work a larger area, might even feel like working up into the temples or in this area a little bit. And that's gonna help relax the shoulder. And then we're gonna finish off by circling the ear. We always circle the ear at the end of a formula because that sets that formula in. It helps it to last longer and stronger. And I encourage you that if you're doing this for frozen shoulder that you're keeping um, tabs on your progress. Are you noticing more range of motion, a little less pain? Incidentally, you don't really wanna be taking pain medications like Tylenol or ibuprofen with um, frozen shoulder or really anything. And the reason why is because they actually inhibit some of the healing process. So they inhibit part of the process that allows you to heal fully and completely. And so it will slow down your process. I know it can be very painful to have it, but I would certainly look into those dietary things, lots of facial reflexology. If you have a practitioner in your area, I would highly recommend that you see them for some treatments to get things settled in your body and calm down. Seeing somebody will always magnify your results, but of course you can always work on yourself. You can always grab a friend or a partner and uh, meet up with them. If you want to learn more about facial reflexology, my next class is starting September 6th and 7th. That's just next week. So you can check out my website for more information on that. And if you need to um, order a magic wand, you can do that there as well. As always, thank you for watching. Please comment below if you noticed a change in your shoulder pain from doing this video. And also let me know what topics you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.